Hi, today I'm going to explain you how to realize lava flow simulation using QLava. As an example, I decided to work on Etna Volcano, which experienced the lava flow in 2001, for which we can see the outline. To realize a simulation, QLava needs some basic information, which is the topography, the eruption place, and some information about the lava flow properties. But first of all, Topography. Topography plays an important role to determine where your lava flow front will propagate. Therefore, you have to provide QLava with a digital elevation model, also known as a DEM. And the DEM must be projected in UTM and it is recommended to fill the sinks and the no data pixels value to avoid the simulation to be stuck in abnormal depression present in the DM. Try to also limit the extent of the DM to avoid to overload the plugin. Moreover, the DM has to be in an ASCII format, but don't worry about that. Because when you click on that button, actually, even if you don't have an ASCII format, you can still pick up a TIFF format introduce it into QLava, which will automatically convert it into an ASK format. The second information you have to provide is which type of vent you want to simulate. The eruption sources can be defined in QLava as a point, a line or a surface area. And the coordinates can be inserted manually over here. If you know exactly the coordinates, you can type them. Otherwise, you can use that little tool over here, which is called the coordinate capture tool. And when it is activated, you will see a small window that appears. You can click on start capture and click on the place where you see the eruption started. You will see that it will capture then the coordinates of that points and it will be quite easy to introduce manually these coordinates into QLava. If you decide to realize a linear fissure or surface area simulation, you will have to provide additional coordinates. Moreover, if one of these two options are selected, you will have to define a distance between the vents. The simulation are not realized as each pixel, but according that spacing that you will have to define. In the second tab, you will have to provide information about the lava flow characteristics, such as the height and the length. Indeed, lava flow is a viscous fluid with a yield strength. And for that reason, it doesn't only follow the steepest path, but is able to propagate laterally field depression and overcome topographical obstacles. That is the reason why we included into QLava corrective factors HC and HP, which enabled the lava flow to overcome small topographical obstacles. HC can be considered like the average lava flow height and HP like the maximum. According to field work, it has been assumed that the average lava flow height was of 3.2 meters, whereas the maximum lava flow height was of 16.5 meters. As you know, in reality, lava flow emplacement is controlled by a lot of parameters, which are not often available for a simulation. That is why we propose you to choose between different lava flow length constraints based on the amount of information you have. With that first option, QLava will consider the length as a travel distance covered by the lava flow line. It considers each visited pixel and loops realized by the flow line. The iteration will stop when that distance is reached. For the Euclidean distance, it represents the crow fly distance between the point where the simulation starts and the front of the flow line. The simulation stops when that distance is reached.
Because the length of each lava flow is not constant for a given volcano, it can be assumed that the probability of reaching a certain length can be expressed by decreasing cumulative density function. This third option allows weighting the probability of a lava flow inundation of each pixel along a lava flow line based on a decreasing cumulative density function. To use this equation, the user must to define the average length and the standard deviation of the historical lava flow of the volcano. The simulation stops when the flow line reach a maximum Euclidean length equal to the mean plus three times the standard deviation. Flowable is an option for users having a lot of information about the physical properties of the lava flow. Flogo is a cooling limited model that has been developed by Harris and Roland in 2009 and for more information I recommend you to read their paper. But for our small example we are going to try to use these two first and thanks to previous measurements I can say that the lava flow line was of more or less 6,640 meters and that is the value that I'm going to introduce. The result obtained after a simulation is actually an integration of all the lava flow lines computed from one or multiple eruptive vents. The number of lava flow lines computed for one vent is defined by the number of iterations that must be defined. A sufficient number of iterations must be provided. According to previous tests, it has been observed that for a punctual eruption, an average of 1500 iterations allow us to obtain stable and representative results. For line or surface simulation, this number can be reduced as all these iterations will combine with each other and will still allow us to provide representative results. When that is complete, you can go to the third tab where you will have to provide information about the generated output files. At first, don't worry too much about the lava flow probability and the fitness index, but be aware that you have to provide the plugin, an output path and an output name to your file. To do that, press on the button, select a folder where you want to save the file and provide that file with a specific name, the volcano on which you're working with and the option you're testing. Manhattan length. Before starting the simulation, I highly recommend you to save the input parameters you've implemented into the QLava interface. This will enable you to reuse these options in a future simulation. When that is done, press on the button or use your keyboard Ctrl R to start the simulation. The below bar will show you how far you are in the process. After a few seconds, you will see the simulation popping up into your working space. That is a raster output, which provides you information about the probability of each pixel to be inundated. The darker the color, the higher the chance to be inundated. If you want to realize a second simulation, you can always reopen QLava and you will see that all input information are still present, which enables you to easily adapt the parameters that you want to test and test another option. But if you close QGIS, you might have lost all this information and you will be in front of such an interface. Don't worry, because we saved all these parameters, we can reload them quite easily by using that small button located over there on the first tab and re-import all the information into the interface. And use a second option, such as the Euclidean distance, which are according to my measurements, reach more or less 6,250 meters. Of course, I'm going to change the output name in order to keep both outputs. 
When that is done, press on the button or use your keyboard. We see that Kilava is calculating and after a few seconds, this is the result you can obtain using that second option. You clearly see that using exactly the same parameters, we obtain different results. And of course, it is your job as a user to test Kilava. I hope this tutorial has been useful for you and I wish you a lot of fun with Kilava. Bye.